out there. My name is Milesy and welcome to my channel. One of the very first videos I did on this channel was showing you how to dye your own embroidery floss and I have some here. Uh, that video doesn't exist because it was the very first one I put up. It was terrible. It was just nothing was good about it. So we're going to actually show you and I have two hanks of embroidery floss that we are going to be using because I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. And a quick note on it, it doesn't matter how big the hank is, just as long as you have the amount that you need. You can do this by the individual skein. I've seen people do it. I've done it. It doesn't scale very well. It's very difficult to wash and wash well and it's expensive. Right now, I know it is really hard to get, there's a ghost in here. Uh, I know it's really hard to get cones of floss right now because a lot of textile companies have been shifting to production of elastic. So trying to find white and black especially is really hard. But if you can get your hands on white floss, and you want to dye it, we're going to show you how. And one quick note is you'll want some yarn as well or some other type of material and you're just going to make a very loose loop and I put three of these on each hank and you don't want it to be super tight. It's there to keep your loop intact but if it's too tight the dye won't be able to get underneath the yarn and you'll have these little hot spots of just white, bright, bright, bright white floss, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but it might not be what you're going for. So we're just going to make sure that the yarn that we have on here is nice and loose and it's only there to keep everything together when we wash it. So you don't need it to be tight. It's just there so that you can find the middle of your loop. Now, what else do you need? Depending on the method, you need something that is microwave safe. I like to use this little guy. It's perfect. It's just a one cup measuring cup. Or you need some plastic wrap. And make sure that the plastic wrap that you have is microwavable. You need to be able to microwave it either way. You also need your dye. I do use RIT, but these are pre-mixed colors. You don't necessarily want to use it right out of the bottle. I do a three to one or four to one ratio. I think it's three to one ratio of dye to water. So there's or rather water to dye. So it's three parts water, one part dye for a regular batch. And then I will further dilute that depending on the color that I want. So we are using charcoal gray with my horrible, horrible handwriting, citrus orange, and passion pink. These are the colors that we're going to be using today. So the first way we're going to do this, which is, I think it's the easiest one, is we're just going to use our little measuring cup right here. And how the colors turn out on the floss is going to depend on how tightly you twist it. Now you can just throw this in here as it is, not twist it, just keep it nice and loose and put it in there and you'll get a fairly solid color. Or you can twist it up, which is what we're going to do. We're going to twist this up and we're going to do some over dyed floss and it's starting to get tight. And what we're going to do is we're going to just twist that up until it wants to, uh, loop on itself like that and it can probably still go a little bit further and then we're just going to twist it up more this way because we want this to be good and tight so it mostly stays as it is and this way if we get little hot spots on it it won't matter and just to secure it I'm going to take one loop and Put it through the other one. It might be a bit tricky, but this is just going to kind of keep it all in one piece. So there we go. This will keep it so it stays nice and tight. 
and exactly where we want it and then we're just going to shove it in there all the way down at the bottom and we're going to give our dye a little bit of a shake because this has been sitting in my closet you can pre-mix it and store it you just want to make sure that it doesn't get exposed to light which is why all of my jars are or my bottles are at least opaque or semi uh, semi opaque and they hang out in a closet they don't hang out here until i'm using them and we are just going to splash some of this on here and we want to make sure that everything gets more or less covered this is very similar to when we're dyeing fabric we don't want it to get dry we want it to be coated but because we tighten it up really big or really tightly the dye is not going to be able to get inside those twists so here we go a little pot of kind of what looks like brains and we're going to pop it in that microwave Now, you, it's very hot, be careful, but you might notice it's changed color and it's going to steam up my camera a little bit, but it's become a much darker, deeper orange. And if you kind of can look in there, I don't know if you can see, but a lot of the liquid has turned more transparent. I microwaved this for one minute and 30 seconds and it helps to have it plugged in before you start. And one minute and 30 seconds was enough to get this up to a rolling boil. Now, the second way we're going to do this is with our friend, the plastic wrap. Normally, I would make my hanks this big because I would do the entire length. But because I don't have a lot of space, I'm going to fold this in half again. So we're only using about this much. There's some loose threads. That's fine. It doesn't matter. So we're going to fold that over twice, or fold it over once, and then we want enough plastic wrap to cover the entire thing. And you kind of have to get good at using plastic wrap. I know it's something a lot of people do struggle with. And we are just going to put the plastic wrap down onto the table. And hopefully we don't wang the hell out of the camera this time. And the floss just goes right on top of the plastic wrap. And we have, it's hard to see because it kind of goes off the camera. I just don't have enough room to lift it up too much because that's about as big as my work surface is. And we're just going to take our die. Again, give it a good shake, mix it up. And I'm going to do this half passion pink and half charcoal gray. You will get very messy doing this. Uh, you can wear gloves. I don't like to, personally, because when you wear gloves, you cannot feel whether or not the floss is saturated. At least I can't. So we want to pour on enough to really saturate it and uh, make sure it doesn't rip onto my floor because I don't have rugs in here anymore. I used to, but they were annoying. So we're just going to massage the floss. Just kind of poke it, massage it, and really press that dye into there. And you can see this is a really dull, kind of a boring bland pink right now. And we'll see how it looks when it comes out. Don't you dare. I'm just gonna fold that over for now. Uh, it helps to have a space that you don't mind if it gets messed up. I want to get some better floor mats in here. I just don't have them. So we're just going to lightly tap it down, grab ourselves a paper towel, which are also useful. And I do find that if you're doing it this way, start with the lighter color and then go to the dark. If you start with the darker one, you're going to have some of that on your fingers. The dark is going to wick over weirdly. So we're starting with the light so that when we touch the dark side, it doesn't matter because you won't see it. So now we're going to add some of that charcoal gray and do the same thing. 
and uh, watch as it explodes everywhere. Be careful. And I love how this is one of their official squirt bottles, and it is leaking everywhere. That is fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Where'd my paper towel go? Because I don't want that. This is why I'm wearing black. And we're just going to do the same thing. You can mop up anywhere where it seems like it's wicking over. And it's okay if it wicks over a little bit because it's hand-dyed floss. It's allowed to not be perfect. And we just want to really get that in there. Pick up anything extra because this squirt bottle was awful. I told you this makes a mess. And give it a nice pat down. And it seems like we have way too much in there, so I am going to pick some of that up. I don't want that much gray on here, because that much gray will wick over into our pink. So we just want to pick up as much of it as we can. And you can see when you press it down, there's still a lot coming out. Now we're going to seal up the ends like that. Seal that one up and very carefully roll it. So now we have a really horrible, disgusting floss cigar, basically. And this too is going into the microwave. Now you want to kind of keep an eye on these ones because the ends can pop and then it just makes a big mess. It's not going to hurt anything, it's just not fun to clean up. And you can kind of see that pink has really brightened up. The gray has really uh, darkened up. So I'm going to take both of these and go wash them in the sink very quickly. Uh, you just need a little bit of, you start off with warm and then you move to cold water and just maybe a little bit of soap if you feel like it needs it. This is not going to be color fast. This will, no matter what you do with it, it will run a little bit. So a lot of this I recommend for projects that are going to be very quick, very easy to uh, complete, that won't need to be washed. But I'm going to go wash out this floss, and then we'll see what it looks like. So here we have a very, very bright orange with lots of really nice hot spots, which is exactly what we wanted. I don't know how well it shows up down there. Here we have that, and then we have this one, which is a really nice pink and a really deep dark gray, and these colors will lighten as they dry. Now, to dry these, you want to store them upright with the lightest color on the top. You don't want to unwind this yet. If you unwind this, the gray will touch the pink or whatever colors you have, and you'll wind up with mud. Uh, this one is going to matter a little bit less, but we're still going to store it. I don't even want to do that. I just kind of had it that way. I'm going to store it like this so that as it dries, nothing will touch. Those hot spots won't get kind of damaged. And I'm just going to hang these up on hangers in my bathtub. So that's all, that's all you have to do. Very, very simple. In 20 minutes, we have made two different really pretty colors of floss. And both of these, I'm going to list both of these up on my store. So if you want some pink and gray or some really badass looking orange, you can go ahead and uh, get those. They should be up on the store by the time this video goes up, I believe. I believe. We'll see. But I hope you guys found this helpful. This is one I've wanted to redo for years, and it just never seemed to happen. So here we go. Hand-dyed floss in your own home with a microwave. A couple of tips. It helps if your microwave is a craft one. Food does not go in that. That thing is a disaster. And you can get some color stay from RIT if you're using RIT dye that will help the colors stay a little bit longer. If you have a very extremely gentle cycle on your washing machine, you can tighten up your little yarn loops at this point and throw it into the washing machine as well 
it does kind of tend to come out though very much tangled even if you tighten that so i would only recommend doing that if you are really concerned about this running i do label these as not color fast i do put warnings on them that the colors may bleed if you wash them because it's a little bit easier for me to skip the washing machine and just not risk having a completely unusable hank of floss that's happened multiple times where I thought I'd go the extra mile and then it doesn't work because I wind up with nothing usable in the end. Also the washing machine can cause the colors to touch which is why I don't like to do that. And again when you're washing this one always keep the lighter color on top so that the darker one doesn't bleed down onto it. But that is I think all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Make sure you turn on notifications if you want to see every video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!